All right, hello. So, welcome to Roblox Studio. Uh, today, I'm going to show you how to make a switch, and then later, I'll show you how to tween it. Basically, animate it with script. So, let's go ahead and make this script. Uh, not the script, the switch. So, I'll just go ahead and make a simple one. Um, I guess not. Actually, I want to make it look better than that. I can do better than that. All right, give me a second. All right, so we're gonna make the lever, which is the movable part. Um, there we go. I'll just make us you know, black, and then this part make it a little darker shade because the ground is dark. There we go. And then I'll just do this. Some more beveling or detail. Just guess. Reset that. Alright. So, switch. We have the base. And the movable part is going to be this part. So I'm going to union this so it's one piece. And then, uh, here's the lever, and then we can go ahead and make our light source. So, let's see. I'll make it this part, and then I'll add a point light, which will make something bright. There we go. Uh, shadows, yes, I like shadows. Uh, I'll add this, so uh, let's see, shadow, yeah, nice. Let's make it neon, make it bright, and I like it, I like, I like the orange, let's see, something like that. Uh, we can't really see it, so we're gonna have to put the brightness up, and I'll put exact same color as the part by putting it in this color property. There we go, make it a little brighter, there we go. So here's our light, and we have our switch. So, let's go ahead and make like, uh, two other frames. These are gonna be, actually no, I'm gonna sh show you how to make it change and turn off and not on. So, let's start with grouping this, and we'll call this switch. And then we're gonna insert a, uh, let's see, proximity prompt will look nice, so. Proximity prompt, so I'll just go in, I don't know how to put it. Just put A, it doesn't matter. Shoot. Alright. Local proximity prompt. Since the script is inside this, we can do script.parent. This will reference script.parent. It references this. So now if we do proximity prompt dot trigger ended connect function, this will connect thing to whatever we want to do. So let's say we want to print hello world. Alright. Basically, when the proximity prompt dot trigger ended, when it ends, it will print hello world, like that. Now, since we want the light to change, all we have to do is find a light, which is point light. So, we can do game.workspace.part.pointlight, and that will find point light. So then we'll do Brightness equals, um, let's actually do enabled, let's just do enabled, dot enabled equals false. So what this does is when proximity prompt dot trigger ended, so when we finish the trigger, the proximity prompt, this point light will turn false. That means that this value here in point light 
enabled is going to be false because it's a boolean. And we can do vice versa and change. So let's make it so that when we press it two times, it will turn off instead of just turn on and off. But we need to test our code so we can make sure it works throughout. There we go. But now we need to make sure that we can turn it on after that. So local on actually do on equals true. Actually it might let's just start with it off. Equals true. Alright. And then I'll just turn this guy off. Now we can do if off equals true. So if it's off then it will turn on else if off equals false then it will turn off because it's on so now we need to make the off value change off equals false and then this part will be off equals true It's a little complex, so feel free to reread it over a couple times. So, now it'll turn on and off. Now what we need to do is make the lever uh, move, because it's just staying in place. So, what we'll do here is make couple more levers so let's move it by 15 degrees so I'll name this on lever and we'll name this off lever Now we're going to grab these guys. I mean, oh, they're already in there. Just going to make them a little bit transparent. And then what we can do here is let's go ahead and comment this. Um, light enabled equals true, so that means the delay is enabled. So turn on. And this will turn off. So now we need to get our lever. Local lever is script. Actually, we can do proximity prompt. Dot parent. So now it's parent. So it's referencing the lever, which is what we have selected. So this is our movable lever. And we need to get our two over lever positions. So I'll just get the base model. So I'll get local model is little lever dot parent. So now we have the parent of this, which is switch. All right. So let's see. I'll just do. Local tween data. This is our tween info equals tween info dot new. And then in these parameters, it will show us what we need to put in here. So time, let's say it takes one second to move the lever. Enum dot easing style dot linear and then enum dot easing direction. Dot in out. Now that will that is our tween data. All right, let's go ahead and uh, make our animation. Local lever animation equals tween. Oh, we need to get our tween service. Local tween service. 
It's game, get service, tween service. Tween service, create, and now this will give us what we need. We need our instance, which is going to be our lever. So, movable lever. And then we need to get our tween info, which is our tween data variable we made. And our property table. So, what do we want to make change? So, let's say the C frame. So, why do we want to change the C frame? Well, we want to change the C frame because it allows us to tween it to another part's position and orientation. The way we do that is grabbing a C frame and then we can put it into something else which will also put it in the same position and rotation. That's what it will do with our lever but in an animation form. Keyframe equals now since it's going to turn on let's get model dot and then lever so on lever dot c frame so let's go ahead and play the animation lever animation play lever animation and then stop dot completed wait this will wait till the animation is done, and this will play it. So, uh, hold up, I gotta anchor this. My bad. Just anchor that, and I don't want to walk that far because I'm lazy. All right. So. Um, alright, I guess it doesn't work. Oh, it does work. It was just really slow. Alright, so, it does work. Yeah, so, now we need to add animation to the other side. Instead, it's gonna get, um, on lever, we're gonna do off lever. What this does is change the C-frame of this to on lever, and it changes it to off lever after that. So, let's make it a little quicker than that, though. So, this is our speed. So you do something like half that, which is 0 0.5. So, it'll be two times faster. But, uh, I'm not sure why it's not working. That's weird. Alright, so I've actually found the issue. Uh, the issue was actually not the script itself. It was um, when I duplicated this. This also duplicated the other scripts and the proximity prompt in them. So go ahead and delete those because we don't need that in these other ones. And then also turn off requires line of sight on the property of this proximity prompt. And this should fix the issue. So let's go ahead and take a look and just click play, I don't know. Alright, interact. There we go, turns on, and it turns off. So, there we go. There's our script. Now let's say you have multiple of these, right? Um, that might be an issue for you because it, it goes into workspace.part. You know. So... Yeah, it's not it's not gonna work the way you want it to. Um, let's make it so it works for um, let's say multiple parts, right? So um, let's say we have two light bulbs. So this is gonna get a little more complex, but I think you guys will understand. So we need those lights. And then we'll put this in the switch group. Basically now it's in that. So, let's see. Group and put lights. And I'll name this lights. Oops, not lights, lights. Lights. So now the two lights are in a group. So, 
let's go ahead and reference that group in a variable. Local group lights group is, and then we're going to get model dot lights. So now we go model dot lights. Remember, model is this switch. So lights. So now we need to make it so that they will turn all on or turn all off. So the way we do that is actually going to be like this. Let's make it for index v in pairs and then lights group get children and basically what that does is it goes into lights group and it gets everything inside of it so we can even have three lights like that and now we can do uh, let me make this easier for you to understand so for every um, light or I'm gonna name it part because these are parts in the group for every part in here if part we need to check if it's a part so using is a function is a part then part and then we need to go into it and let's say local light is part dot find for child of class point light so what it does is it goes into part and it finds anything the class of point light so now we do light dot enabled equals it's going to be opposite of this so that's true and then what we can do is part dot uh, Brick color. Actually, let's just make it part. Done. Uh, what should we do to make it off? Let me see. Should we just make it plastic? Would that work? Yeah, that would work. Part dot material equals. Right. Yeah. I'm going to make this neon, and then I will make the other one plastic, because this turns it on. Good thing we have our comments here. And then we're going to replace this with that same function. Um, it's plastic. And we'll put this false to turn it off. So now... Turn all the lights on, turn all the lights off. Works pretty nicely. Um, also, that does fix your other issue too. So, you can now have multiple and be able to change a group with the uh, same switch. Alright, that'll be it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.